in Jesus' name. <laughs> Say this after me every day and in every way. I'm getting better and better. I'm getting wiser and wiser. I'm getting smarter and smarter. I'm getting richer and richer. I'm getting taller and taller. With understanding now, fatter and fatter. <laughs> By the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Father, we thank you again today. We approach your word like people that have found a great treasure. We ask for eyes that see Jesus and ears that hear his voice. Hearts that understand who we are in Jesus and who Jesus Christ is in us. As that you anoint me and my lips of clay again, let your word come unhindered and unsupervised by any outside force. At the end of today's message, let everybody be edified and let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, today I want to teach you how to keep the fire burning. How to keep the fire burning. I'm teaching this because God said to me that those who will experience the daily miracles for the rest of the year, as a result of Revive, are those who manage to keep the fire burning for the rest of the year. Leviticus chapter number 6, from verse 8 to verse 13. Leviticus 6, 8 to 13, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. The burnt offering shall be on the earth upon the altar all night until morning, and the fire of the altar shall be kept burning on it and the priest shall put on his linen garment and his linen trousers he shall put on his body and take up the ashes of the burnt offering which the fire has consumed on the altar and he shall put them beside the altar then he shall take off his garments put on other garments and carry the ashes outside the camp to a clean place somebody say a clean place and the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it it shall not be put out and the priest shall burn wood on it every morning somebody say every morning and lay the burnt offering in order on it and it shall burn on it the fat of the priest of the peace offering a fire shall always be burning on the altar it shall never go out can we read verse 13 together from the screen everybody a fire shall always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. The fire of the Lord is in our hearts now. If you were here for any of the days, you have caught fire. But we still have to keep the fire burning to make sure that it never goes out. So that you are not in three months time waiting for the next revive. That when you are coming for the next revive, you are expecting a greater measure. You are expecting an increase. It's not that the supply has diminished now. You, you, are, you are looking to catch fire all over again. So how do we manage to do this? Jeremiah 20 verse 9. He says, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name, but his word was in my heart, like a burning fire, shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. So he said, his word was in my heart like a burning fire his word was in my heart like a burning fire acts chapter 2 verse 3 to 4 acts chapter 2 verse 3 to 4 then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them and they were all how many people were filled all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance so when he says all, what he means is all, all. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. Your reality is not as true as the word of God. Your reality has to always conform to the word of God. If God says you are healed, you have to agree that you are healed for you to experience the manifestation. God can keep telling you that you are healed and you say, no, I'm not healed. I don't feel healed. But until your, your confession agrees with the word of God, you will not see a manifestation. Because he said, all were filled with the Holy Spirit. Every single one of them. What is instructive here, put that scripture back on the screen, verse, verse number 4. It says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak. Who began to speak? Was it the Holy Spirit that began to speak? 
listen to me, I will continue teaching this until the body of Christ gets it. The Holy Spirit is not going to take over your mouth and start saying things that you don't know. He will give you utterance. He said, began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Yeah, the Spirit gave them utterance. But they did the speaking. They did the speaking. So you choose when you speak in tongues. It's not that the Holy Spirit just comes upon you and you don't have any control over it. He says the Spirit gave them utterance, but they spoke in other tongues. And this is a very critical part when it comes to this issue of fire. Because you see in verse 3 that it was when the fire, it says uh, the, the, the divided tongues as of fire, that they now began to experience this gift of speaking in other tongues. So the gift of speaking in tongues is closely connected to keeping the fire burning. If you are going to find a Christian who will be on fire for God 24-7, that Christian is speaking in tongues. You will not find a believer who does not believe in speaking in tongues. Now, the believers who don't believe in speaking in tongues will go to heaven. Don't ever forget that because they are believers. The speaking in tongues is not what gets you to heaven. It is believing in Jesus. But on the earth, for you to be on fire for God, there is no minister on the earth who ministers in the manifestation of the Spirit, like we saw over the last three days, who does not speak in tongues. It's not possible. It's not possible. Those ministers depend on other things. They depend on other things. Everything is gentle. Everything is quiet. There's no time for no. Everything has to be perfect. If it's not perfect, there's a problem. <laughs> There's no, there's no space for the move of the Holy Ghost. There's no space for it because for you to experience that, these two things are connected. The divided tongues as a fire came on them and they spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And I want to explain to you something about this utterance thing is that when you start to speak in tongues, it's like a child that has just learned a new language. You might start out with just ba 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 That's all you know because that's the utterance that was given to you at the beginning. But as you practice it, as you continue to speak in other tongues, you will get, you start getting something called fresh utterance. Fresh utterance starts coming. As you pray in other tongues more and more, the Spirit of God starts opening channels of your spirit. Channels start opening up. And you start hearing yourself saying some things that you don't understand. It's a language. It's a language. A child who is learning to speak cannot keep saying, gimme, 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 gimme. Gimme, 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 because my name is Jimmy. Gimme, 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 gimme. You, after some time, you will say something is wrong here. <clears throat> There's got to be another set of words. But those words come with practice. So if you, you got filled with the Spirit in this meeting, every day for the next three days, don't speak any English. No hablo English. No hablo English. Don't speak English. Go to God every day. Even if it is baba, 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 baba that he gave you as the first set of utterance, say that until it breaks forth. He says, it will, until the day dawns and, and the day star arises in your heart. Something will open up in your spirit. You start hearing yourself saying other things. Look, look, this thing takes faith. It takes a lot of faith. That's why I don't beat people up if they can't express that faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If after you listen to the word of God, you still say you don't have enough faith, then there's an issue there. There's an issue there. So for you to be able to, to, to get to this point, you have to believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That he will not give you a fake gift. That you know, you're worried that maybe my tongues is fake. I just told you that this meeting that we just had, every single time I prayed, I prayed for hours every single day. It was like a job. My wife is here. I wake up in the morning, I dress up, I pick up my bag, I come to church. I'm praying till I'm almost late for the meeting. So this is not, and I'm praying in tongues. I'm not saying, God, please send people. God, please, no, 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 because I don't know what to pray for. There's another level where you don't even know what to ask the Father for, you don't know what He wants to do. But he wants the Holy Spirit to do that praying through you. But you must know that the prayer you are praying is not in your flesh. You must have the faith that even though I'm saying things, he says your understanding is unfruitful. Even though I'm saying things I don't understand, you have to trust that this is the Holy Ghost. That's how to be a Christian. It's faith. You believe that this is the Holy Spirit. So even if all you know is ba 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 say ba 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 and interject it within the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ba 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 in the name of Jesus. Ba 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 in. As you are saying ba 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 you just suddenly hear yourself ba 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 sa ta ba 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 supra ha ta ba and you wonder where did this come from? It's another channel that has opened up. Say amen to that. Glory to God. Matthew chapter three verse eleven. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I whose sandals I am not worthy to carry he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and 
fire. This is where the idea of fire comes from. It's not something we made up. It's, it's a biblical thing. It will baptize you with fire. And he has already done that over these last three days. He has baptized you with fire. And when you have an encounter with God, you are baptized with fire. The grace to make this a lifestyle is what you are going to live here with this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So that it's not that it stops with revive and all the things you were, you were you, the habits that you formed over the last three days. This morning you woke up and said, ah, finally I can eat. Ah, what do I want to eat now? I need an omelette right now. <laughs> I need a, it's not time to go back to those bad habits. I'm telling you, they are bad habits. I've told you, you, you need to get to a point where you are eating for strength, not for pleasure. That is the life of the spirit. Where you are eating for strength is not for pleasure. It's not just, you know, gluttony, just to eat and eat and eat everything. No, no, it's for strength. You are eating for strength. It's a discipline that you have to cultivate so that you maintain that lifestyle, so that it doesn't end with revive this year. Glory to God. So, how to keep the fire burning? Three points. Number one, you have to continue with your daily disciplines. That's the first step. After this encounter that we have had on this mountain, you must continue with your daily disciplines. The Lord will not do that for you. You have to do that. After the fire fell on them in verse 3 and 4, they continued daily. Acts chapter 2 verse 42. Acts 2 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. They did this one. They continued in it. They continued steadfastly. Verse 46 then says, So continuing daily, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. There are things we do daily in this faith. We read our Bible. We pray. It, it's very simple. Basic things. We read our Bible every single day. We read our Bible. Minimum, read one chapter. Minimum. I didn't say one verse. Don't wait for a Bible app to send you a verse of the day. Then you say, I've read my verse of the day. No, no, no. No, because if you wake up in the morning... And, and maybe you are a child and your parents say all you get today is a drop of milk you will say ah, ah what's going on that a drop of milk is not enough to, to satisfy you that's the same way with your spirit so when you, you feed your spirit with one verse of the day that one verse is not enough to deal with the demons of that day yeah so minimum minimum and if you like pick the shortest chapter let it be six verses that's, your, that's on you but minimum of one chapter every day it's a basic discipline that we have and we show up to God every day in our sacred place and we pray we pray we pray and from 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 tonight uh, from last night from the, the three nights that we've had you are praying in other tongues every single day I want to stress to you why it's important that you pray in other tongues Jude verse 20 let me show you something here Jude verse 20 it says but you beloved building yourselves up on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Spirit. There are some of you who, who have never experienced faith like you experienced it yesterday you, or, or the day before. You have never experienced faith like that. You were at a level where as you were standing in the audience, you knew that anything is possible. Am I, am I making sense? That's faith. You experienced it. I know you did. Yeah. That you, as you were there, your faith was so high that in your heart you were like, wow, anything can happen in this place. He says now you have to build yourself on your most holy faith. On that faith that you experience, the way you build yourself on it is to pray in the Holy Spirit. So that it's not that the faith now drops to a level where now you're, you're now like, ah, I, I, wish, I wish they could do revive every month <laughs> so, that, so that I can have. No, no. You can build yourself upon your most holy faith just by praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit. And this is something that you have to make time for every single day. I told you from 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 2000, I don't know, is it 2003 or when was it now? The first WAF back that we had. Do you remember the year it was? Uh, West African Faith Believers Convention. It's, it's, a, it's a long time ago. 2003 is probably when it was. Because they did, um, was it 10th anniversary? I can't even remember all this. I'm not good with all these numbers. I've been praying in the Spirit one hour every single day. One hour. That's my goal every day. It's not, it's not something that I leave to chance or to say, okay, when, I, when I've, I've, I've been praying, and my prayer has reached, you know, it's like, you know, believer, when you are praying and your prayer has reached the point where you have exhausted the words, then you now say, no, that's not what we're talking about. Is that you set out time to say, this one hour, I want to pray in other tongues. I want to pray in other tongues. Look, I'm a human being like you. I prayed in tongues for hours without looking at the time. 
the, the problem with you is that you are encumbered with so many things. You are encumbered with so many things. You have to set up, set that time as aside. Put the time away. You can go, 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 pray, 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 and you look up and it's two minutes. Don't worry. Don't worry. Let me assure you about time. Time always passes. Oh, that's a revelation for somebody. Do you know that time always passes? If you set a date today and say on the 31st of December, 2025, I'm going to do something. You know when we're, we're announcing Revive and saying Revive is coming? You know, it was like, it was far away. But it's gone. So if you set one hour, I'm telling you that one hour will pass. You will not die. You will be there. And when you finish that one hour, you'll be like, what? One hour's gone? Then you'll be excited. Something will come alive in your spirit and you will keep going. The problem is that you have never pushed yourself. You have never pushed yourself. You have never even pushed yourself beyond the 15 minutes mark. You say, oh, look, let me give you a trick. If you get to a point where you get tired, I'm giving you practical advice now. Sometimes I, I pray here, right here. Sometimes it's in that room. What I will do is I'll put on the TV one of the, one of the messages of me preaching. Preaching fire or leading the prayer. I'll put it there. And as I'm coming, I'm hearing it. As I'm coming, so, so that I'm, I'm not alone in that sense. I'm catching some fire. When I need help, I do that. Or I put music. I play some music that that helps me as I'm praying that prayer. So I'm praying another tongue, but I'm, I'm, my spirit is listening to that because your understanding is unfruitful. So you you need to give your your mind something else that will not distract it from the praying. I'm preaching this morning. I don't know why you are looking like. <laughs> I'm giving you. I'm giving you. This is a life act, spiritual act that I'm giving you. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. So you give yourself that music will help your spirit to, to stay alive and you keep going. This is a practice you have to embrace so that you see your life go in another direction. Glory be to God. So tongues is not for emergencies. It's a prayer language of the spirit. It's a prayer language. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 18. Paul said, I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than you all. I thank my God. I speak with tongues. This is the guy who wrote two thoughts of the New Testament. He's giving you the secret. I thank my God. I speak in tongues more than you all. More than you all. It's in praying in tongues that we know, that we have an assurance that all things work together for our good. That's when we get that assurance. Let me show you. Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter 8 from verse 26 to 28. Romans chapter 8, 26 to 28. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Then he says, and we know. And is a conjunction. It's telling you that I'm still continuing what I'm saying. And we know. When we, are, when we allow the Spirit to make intercession for us, to pray through us, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to, the, to his purpose. So it's when you get to that point, there was no night that I was coming here for those meetings that I did not know that we're going to see miracles. There was no night. I knew. that. So it's not like you're coming and you're you are panicking. That's why I, I always tell these guys, I say, I, I tell them all the time, that the reason why we don't start our services with this gymnastic prayer, you know, many churches, when they start a service, they feel like the way to look spiritual is to start with gymnastic prayer. That they are praying hard, praying hard to show that we pray before we start service. No, we just declare before we start because we have prayed. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not when you show up that you start, oh Lord, help us, show up, show up. No, you do that work before you show up so that when you are coming, you know that all things work together for good. All you are doing is, Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare the glory of the Lord over this service today. That's all you need to do. That's all you need to do. So it's not, it's not, when you show up, I'm saying to you, when you show up at your place of work, you should know that all things work together for good. Yeah. When you show up at your kids and they say, you know, he's having developmental issues, uh, he's, he has HDHD, you better reject that rubbish. Because now everybody, they're diagnosing everybody now with HDHD. Anything they cannot explain is HDHD. See, I reject it in the name of Jesus Christ. Because I know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. That happens when you, are, when you are praying this way. When you are praying this way. When you are disciplined about praying this way. Sometimes I don't have one hour to just carve out. It's, I'm driving to work in the morning. My lunch break, I'm locking myself in the mezzanine where they, 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 they do massage chair. I don't need the massage chair. I'm 
locking the door. Rekabarabasata, endolo do bose. Rebrada da bose. Manto jeke ligaba barose kete. That's what I'm doing. For for my 30, 30 minutes out of my one hour, I'm adding another thirty minutes to it. When I'm driving home, razo prehento ligrada ba mento lobro soto indala ba se ento jele bondosia. It's a discipline. It's a discipline. You 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 make it a discipline, and then it will become a delight. Please, if you are going to be a member of this church, this is how we operate. We are not fleshly people. We don't do things in the flesh. Aha. This is, I mean, this is not the church where, I mean, you, you, cannot, you can see that we don't even, we don't, I mean, let me not go there. I will offend some people. I'm, I'm in overflow mood this morning. I'm not here to step on toes. <laughs> Point number two. How do we keep the fire burning? Point number two. Glory be to God. We make a covenant with our eyes. We make a covenant with our eyes. Job chapter 31 verse 1. Job 31 verse 1. He said, I, I made a covenant with my eyes. Not to look with lust at a young woman. Replace young woman with anything that distracts you. He says, I made a covenant with my eyes. When he says, I made a covenant with my eyes, he's not saying the covenant is between me and my eyes. He's saying, I made a covenant with God, but I used my eyes as the covenant. That's what he's saying. That I have sacrificed my eyes to God, that I will not look with lust at a young woman. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, you are driving. I mean, this is summer, you know. In this summer, everybody's dressing naked. So as you are driving, you keep your eyes fixed on the road. The first look, there's nothing wrong with it. It's the second one that is a problem. Because you are, you are on the road, you are allowed to see. The Bible says you are of the world, you are, you are in the world, you are not of the world. So you can, you can see the first time. But when you now, you see something that you know that you should not see, then you now, ah, ah. There's no covenant. There's no covenant. You make a covenant with your eyes that I'm not going to behold anything. It's called see no evil. I'm not going to behold anything. And this is now, I'm, I'm saying that the one that, stum that you stumble on. Now, you imagine you now sitting down by yourself, paying a subscription. Ah, I can't, I can't understand it. You paid a subscription to be corrupted. So you are paying somebody money every month to corrupt you. To feed you with nonsense. Because there's no show that you watch now. I'm telling you, this is the strategy of the enemy in the, in the last days. The most, the most interesting character in the show huh, will be somebody that doesn't know who they are. Oh, can I preach? Can I preach this morning? Can I go there? The, the, most, the, the, the character that you will fall in love with the most will be the guy who doesn't know, who is confused about his identity. That's the guy. Yeah. That will come in, you know, and, and you will say, ah, is this one? What is this? Is this? We don't know. That's the guy that they will make, they will make sure that that's the character that you will love the most. So that it starts to wash away the word of God from your mind. It starts to, to wash away some things and you are paying. You are paying for it. You are paying for it. Then you sit down there. So that when they are discussing in the office that, oh, did you watch? The, you two can say, Oh, yeah, I watched it. No, no, no. You are in the world. You are not of the world. When they are discussing the latest movies and the latest shows, you should have nothing to say. That's how to be a Christian. You should have nothing to say. The same way when we start to discuss about Gateway Church and start to talk about Kenne Copeland's church, that unbelievers have nothing to say. That's the way it is. So when I show up in my office and they say, what, you're going to Dallas? I say, yeah, I'm, I'm going for Southwest Believers Convention. They say, what is that? I say, it's a gathering of believers from around the world. Everybody's eyes will open because they have no clue what I'm talking about. It's the same way when they are talking about their Barbie and all this rubbish. I have no clue. I don't know what they're saying. Because I will not pay my money to go and be. The last time we went, we went to a movie cinema, and I'm not saying you should not watch movies, but you have to choose what you're going to watch. Choose it carefully. We were in a movie cinema. The last time that my wife and I went to a cinema, sat down and paid our money. We would rather save all the money and go on a spiritual pilgrimage. Never again. We were in the cinema. It was my son. <laughs> my Fimidara was just born then, right? Was it? And he was there with us. He was in the, in the baby stroller. He was there. And they were showing something. It was my son that reacted to what they were showing. Not even us. Because even ch children know that something is wrong with this thing. Even babies know that because they are born with the nature of God. They know something is wrong. So what they are doing is to indoctrinate them. To wash away everything and make them feel like this is normal. There's nothing normal about it. Nothing normal about it. I'm tired of Christians being quiet about this stuff. There's nothing normal about it. I'm 
not saying go to your office and be harassing everybody. But when they come to your domain and talk about things, you straighten them out. You straighten them out. Say, no, no. This is what I believe. Yeah. Like they're doing things and they, are, they want you to celebrate certain things. No. Like I have, I have friends that, that are confused. I have friends that know who they are. I have friends that don't know. I have all these, all sorts of friends. But when it comes to celebrating, I have the right to choose what I want to celebrate. You can't force me to put something on my status if I don't believe in it. You can't force me to wear a t-shirt if I don't believe in it. And the, the way that I, I, I do my own, you know me, I have all these t-shirts that provoke everybody. So I'll wear it when I'm going to the mall. Is when I wear those t-shirts. Because you, you, you have the right to, to, to stop me from talking to you. But you will look on me because I'm handsome, first of all. I'm very handsome. And I, will, and I will dress well. You know me. I, I will show up with swag. Like, my swag is on point. But the t-shirt, it will say what you don't want me to, to tell you. And they will look at me and they'll be looking like this. Like, straight, out of, straight out of God's word. What kind of thing is this? Please go away. Ah, Jesus took me. What, what are you saying? Jesus. Jesus. And you can see on their faces that they are reacting and I'm just smiling. Ah, this is it. This is so good. Because you wear your own thing. You are your, your multicolor. You wear everything. And you show up and you do your thing and you want me to celebrate it. No, sir. Let me just let me move forward. Because if I if I don't if I don't if I don't get back here, I will just keep talking because this stuff, I'm passionate about this stuff. You can cancel me. Oh. Did you hear? You can cancel me. I don't I'm, I'm cancelled. As I am like this. I'm cancelled though. You are not of this world. So you don't go back to eating what you used to eat. And just living life anyhow, or singing all these stupid songs that you, that you that you used to sing, all the things that you deleted during the three days, you are not going back to them. So you preserve your heart by making a covenant with your eyes. You mind what comes in through your eyes, so you can take control of your thoughts. You have been empowered to do that. You have been anointed to do this. Philippians chapter four verse eight. Philippians chapter four verse eight. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true. Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, if you cannot come here and tell us what you were watching, you have no business watching it. That's what he's talking about. Whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, of good reports, of good reports. If we, they were going to show it to the whole church to say, this is what brother, let me find a name that nobody answers. Dominic, there's no Dominic in this church, right? <laughs> This is what brother Dominic was watching last night. If they cannot show it to the church and you'll be confident to sit down, you have no business watching it. That's what he's saying. It, it has to be of good report. And it's not because anybody is watching you or monitoring your life. It's to show yourself approved unto God. If there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. On these things. It's one of the reasons why I decided. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not forcing this on you as a doctrine, okay? Because I need people to be watching my own status, but I don't watch WhatsApp status. Because every time that I watch WhatsApp status, this is many years ago, I decided when the WhatsApp status became a thing that everybody did. Before it was BBM we used to do. So WhatsApp replaced it and became the thing. I know people who are born here don't understand what WhatsApp is. WhatsApp is an app that delivered us from international calling card. So there was a time where immigrants used to pay, buy international cards to call family abro uh, abroad in Nigeria or in, in Congo. Then Facebook bought this app called WhatsApp. W-H-A-T-S-A-P-P. -P. And what that app can do is that you can call anybody anywhere in the world for free as long as they have internet connection. So it's so popular among Africans and Asians because we need to call home. And that's the only app that allows us to do that for free. Not charging any money. When my wife was schooling here, I, I spent my, a fortune on phone call. Oh, how much was the bill that Roger sent to us when we were... They sent a massive bill because of international rates at that time. But WhatsApp set us free. Say amen to this. Amen. So, what was I ever saying about WhatsApp now? The status, right? But it also has problems because now everybody puts up the images and stories that are like statuses and you can watch everything. Sometimes when you finish watching everything, is it that you end up with envy, with bitterness, with malice? Or you have seen something that you really don't have any business seeing. But because you cannot predict what's coming next. No, I don't need that. I need control over what comes to my eyes. So all I'm doing is clicking. I don't know what the person has put there. But I'm clicking and something, something is coming that I have no control. No, 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 sir. No. 
look, if, if, I'm, if I'm living my life anyhow, I will not be a blessing to you. If I'm just exposing myself to anything, I cannot be a, a, a true blessing to you. I cannot be a vessel that God can count on to say, I'm going to use this guy to do these things. I have to preserve what comes into my heart. And that's the way you do that. You don't sit there for hours and hours and hours and you're just watching other people's lives. They are reporting everything. Now, there's good information that comes through there. Please, hear me again. I'm, I'm saying there's good information that comes. So what, what you need to do is to choose. For instance, on Instagram, for example, I have control over the people that I follow. And that's the only people that I will see their updates. So I know WhatsApp is different. Anybody can add you on WhatsApp as long as they have their phone number. <laughs> but on Instagram and all these other apps, I can choose who I follow. So I make sure that all the people I follow are people that I know that they will not post anything that is ungodly. They will not post anything that is not of God in their statuses. And those are the ones that I, I watch. When, I, when I'm really, really hungry for it, you say, you know, that sometimes that you, are, you are in a place where you are waiting for someone or your phone is the only thing you have with you. You just want a distraction, right? But by the time I finish watching all their statuses, from Stephen Chandler to Robert Morris to all these guys, what, what I live with is a desire for more. Do you guys get this thing? That's what I live with. That's what you want to do. You want to build that thing deliberately, deliberately. And that's the way to be a Christian. Please, guys, don't, don't, don't get into this thing where you are just carried away with everything. Everything is okay. No. No, everything is not okay. You are set apart. See, I'm set apart. This is how you present your bodies to God as a living sacrifice. Romans 12.1 I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, only acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And you have to be willing to do this every single day. Every single day. Romans 6, verse 12 to 14. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under law, but under grace. There is, there is no sin that has any control over you. Nothing. There is nothing that has any power over you. You have been delivered from the power of all of it. Say amen to this. Finally, point number three. How to keep the fire burning. You need to provide wood for the fire every morning. You need to provide wood for the fire every morning. What is wood? Wood represents the sacrifice. It's wood for the sacrifice. Leviticus 6, 12 to 13. And the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning. You are the priest over your life. You are supposed to burn wood on that fire every morning. And lay the burnt offering in order on it. And you shall burn it. Burn on it the fat of the peace offerings a fire shall always be burning on the altar it shall never be put out Genesis 22 I've taught you before about the law of first mention this is the first place that the wood shows up in scripture setting the precedence for everywhere else that we see wood so we can understand what it means by wood from this scripture now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him Abraham and he said here I am Then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. So throughout scripture, wood is synonymous with sacrifice. That's the reason why Jesus hung on wood. So that's the symbolism of this wood. Wood represents our idols that we need to sacrifice. It's the work of man's hands. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27 to 29. Deuteronomy 4, 27 to 29. And the Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and you will be left few in number among the nations where the Lord will drive you. And there you will serve God's, the work of men's hands, wood and stone which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell but from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul so wood represents the work of man's hand things that we hold dearly Uh, Isaiah 37 verse 18 I'm just showing you scriptures to show you this truly Lord the kings of Assyria 
have laid waste all the nations and their lands and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were not gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they destroyed them. Revelations 9, verse 20. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not re repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. So wood represents anything you have made into an idol. That is what you need to sacrifice at that fire every single morning. It is something you do every single morning. There are, there are habits that you may think that you have overcome, but every single day you have to renew that sacrifice. Every single day. Because there's going to be a fresh challenge that is coming every single day. So you have to renew that sacrifice every morning. Anything you consider extremely valuable has to be laid down at that altar every single morning. That is what fuels the fire. It is that sacrifice, that wood is what fuels the fire. Have you, have you ever been near uh, natural wood, firewood, right? You, you use that for heat in some of our homes. If you stop putting wood in the fire, the fire will go out. It's as simple as that. That's the way to keep the fire burning. And there is no altar without sacrifice. When you say uh, my prayer altar, what you're saying is sacrifice. Yeah, there is ne it's not going to be convenient for you. It's not going to be convenient. Yeah, there were many people who could not make it to revive because it was not convenient. It's not supposed to be convenient. It's not. Everything cannot be convenient. Yeah, there are times my, my pastor in Nigeria used to tell us stories of how he walked miles on, on foot to, to make it to meetings with Benson Idaosa, with all these guys, where his life was impacted. He will walk because he didn't have money to get there. But now, if we don't get it right, we are not coming to church. We should not make things that are supposed to be an extra blessing. Now the main thing. Now the, No, no, no. It, there's a sacrifice that is involved in this thing, guys. There's a sacrifice that is involved. And I'm not going to be the pastor that pampered you out of your blessing. There is a sacrifice that is needed. There is no altar without sacrifice. Because I've told you before, it's not what you give that goes up. It is what you give up that goes up. Let me repeat that. What you give is not what goes up to God. It is what you give up that actually goes up to God. Yeah. What costs you something? That's what we're saying. That you have to give it up. That this thing was precious to me, but I gave it up. That's what God looks down on and says, what? So in your relationship with God, if it's on fire, sacrifice will be the natural order of things. Nobody will tell you to go the extra mile for God. If your life is actually on fire for God, it will be the natural order. So the sacrifice is not because God needs anything, but because we need it in order to keep the fire burning. It is the wood that fuels our passion and desire to know God the more. Glory be to God. I'm going to close with Hosea 6 verse 6 and then we'll pray. We'll just, okay, maybe let me, let me read the, the, the sacrifice of Solomon. Second Chronicles chapter 1 verse 6 to 7 if you can find that for me. And then we'll go all the way down to, to pray. And Solomon went up. Second Chronicles chapter 1. God bless you. Verse 6 to 7. And Solomon went up there to the bronze altar before the Lord which was at the tabernacle of meeting, and offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. A thousand burnt offerings. On that night, God appeared. God could not wait till the morning. God appeared to Solomon and said, Ask, what shall I give you? So it's not that, you know, these things just, <laughs> it just comes. Like, it's just, you know, there's sacrifice that is involved. You want to have a three-day meeting that is glorious, that God shows up, there is sacrifice. I was not coming here from Boga King every night to come and minister to you. There is sacrifice. Every one of you made sacrifices. Those of you who gave, I was telling my wife there, I told her to tell you, but my wife would not say anything about money. But me, I will say. Because I told her to tell you that when the, the, the audio equipment packed up on Thursday, what we use as the audio interface, on Thursday night, the thing just decided not to work. Right? Two years ago, there is no way, no way, the amount of money that we spent to replace that thing, we didn't buy the one that was there, we bought the pro version of it. That was double the cost. The money we spent to replace that thing, if that had happened two years ago when this church started, Revive would have revived with the sound like that. I'm telling you. The first Revive, the audio sounded as if my voice was bouncing like a ball. <laughs> That's the way it sounded. And you know, it just hit me in a, in a different way. That, so we were able to replace this thing within 24 hours. Like it was, you know, those things hit me different because I know where we have come from. 
It was because many of you gave. You made sacrifices. Your offering was not something that you were just giving. No, 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 just give it. it was a sacrifice that you were making. That's why I am confident that after this meeting that we have just had, your life will not remain the same again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. When we got home yesterday, I said this so much that when we got home yesterday, my son came to me and said, Daddy, what is the meaning of your life will never remain the same again? <laughs> because he heard me say it so many times during the meeting. Glory to God. Let's stand to our feet. I want us to pray now. I want us to pray. Let's stand to our feet.